Hey travelers, today we wanted to share with you some of our top things to do and see when you're in Tokyo. Now if you can't already tell by now, we are doing this video without our glasses. We are now in our back room, but unfortunately the light that's coming in is so strong it's reflecting off of our glasses so you can't even see our eyes just like these big blocks of white. <laughs> I can't see anything. She can't see. You're so I can steal blurry. all her money and she won't even know. Although we live in Japan, we do not live in Tokyo. We are two hours away from Tokyo by train and four hours away from Tokyo by bus. So we're coming at it more from a um, traveler's perspective. Outsiders. Yeah, when we go there, we are tourists. We don't live there. We've been to Tokyo four times during our stay in Japan, which is almost two years now. Yeah. We have each compiled a list of five things that we love about Tokyo. We have not shared these things with each other, so it should be interesting. <laughs> we will go down from five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. And then we have one thing that we rice cooker and so after we go down through five four three two one we will have one thing that we think is the most overrated thing to do when you're in tokyo ready to start yep so my number five thing that i would say to see when you come to tokyo is the tokyo sky tree mm, okay What's your number five i can't see anything Yamachans. Yamachans. <laughs> okay <laughs> they have the best wings in tokyo hands down. I would definitely agree. They have the best wings in Japan. I might even say the best wings in the world. I wouldn't agree with that, but okay, who's definitely. Who makes a better wing than Yamacha? Um, Smokey Jones. <laughs> Boneyard <laughs> the Jones. Boneyard Jones. <laughs> we had this place where we lived in Pennsylvania before we came to Japan called Boneyard Joe's. They made the best smoked wings, but unfortunately they closed. They closed right before we moved. But Yamachan's pretty much, yeah, the best wings in Japan. And it's, Tokyo Sky Tree is cool too. It's pretty great. It's yeah. got great views. It's a little expensive, but yeah. it is super, super high view. Yes. I, mean, I think it's the tallest tower in the world. Um, not the tallest building because that's still the Burj Khalifa, but it's like, I think it's the tallest tower. And I mean, there's more to do than just like go to see the views. There's like a Sky Tree shopping town underneath it. So there's tons of like shopping to do if you want to buy souvenirs and stuff. And get some good restaurants. Yeah, and some good restaurants. It's touristy, but you yeah, know, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So. My number four that I have is the robot restaurant. Oh. In Shinjuku, Japan. Okay. This is super touristy. Yeah. Um, I mean, they only, like the only people that you see, like sitting in the stands watching the show is Westerners mm -hmm. or, or foreigners, non-Japanese yeah. people. When I tell my coworkers about the robot restaurant, they didn't even they know what no that idea is. They have no idea what like, it what is. What is that? But it is definitely very Japanese. Mm. My number four is another restaurant. <laughs> it is called Kujira Ya, and they specialize in whale. So if you're into trying like exotic foods, exotic meats, this is a great place to try it. And it's so, pretty affordable for a lunch set. Yeah. It was actually pretty affordable. I think it was less than $15 for your, your entire meal. Mm -hmm. My number three is eating whale. Ah! <laughs> it's the same as yours. Nice. Yes, that place was awesome. Great experience. If you're into trying whale meat, which is highly controversial, we mm -hmm. know, but yeah. uh, we are not afraid to, to try that and uh, do it while we're living in Japan. My number three is Odaiba. This is a place that we visited pretty much almost every, I think two of we've the been, four times yeah. that we've gone. There's tons of shopping to do there, but I think my favorite thing about Odaiba is this um, like old nostalgic arcade that they have there. Mm. It's just a fun place to visit. You might also have heard of it because they usually have a huge Gundam statue. I think they just switched it out. Yeah, they, they had one year. that was up there for so long and then they, they take it down and every so often they put up a new different Gundam robot statue. It's really, mm -hmm. really tall. Really, really cool. It is a man-made island. Yeah. There's a really, really cool bridge. It's called the Rainbow Bridge. It's really beautiful views. It like lights up at night and it's just really pretty. My number two is the different parks and gardens located all throughout Tokyo. I'm talking about Yoyogi Park, Imperial Gardens, Rikugien Garden, 
diff just the oh, different yeah. Japanese style gardens with the bridge and the manicured lawns and the, the landscaped different trees and stuff and the walking paths. Just really cool place just to walk around and get away from the concrete jungle and more yeah. into the peaceful setting. And the first two, the Imperial Gardens and Yoyogi are both free. Riku Gien um, does cost, but it's like like three or four hundred yen, I think. Yeah, it's not but very it's much. totally worth it. One of our favorite experiences is just to kind of get away and just kind of see. And they have a lot of Japanese maple there too, which is really nice. My number two is Robot Restaurant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. It is a little pricey. I think mm, it was like yeah. 6,800 yen. I but you think. get a free drink. So, Ooh, there's settle that. down. It's, <laughs> it's totally like cool for kids. I mean, yeah, it's age yeah. appropriate. Even like the outside has like these big busty like robot <laughs> females. You're thinking, oh, this has got to be sketchy. Yeah. But the inside is like completely mm -hmm. family friendly. It's nothing sexual at all. Yeah, like that. there's so nothing in it. I don't know why they have it. it on the inside. But. Well, I think it's the area, like the area too around it. It's kind yeah. of sketchy, like it, yeah. especially at night. Yeah. But the show itself, the is show itself is totally, yeah. and they have them totally throughout cool. the day too. I think you can mm -hmm. even go earlier. And your number one, my number one is Odaiba. <laughs> really? Yeah. Number one. Number one. Wow. I just thought because honestly, when you're coming to Tokyo, I mean, there's obviously tons to do. There's so much to do and mm -hmm. see when you're in Tokyo. I mean, we there's still so much stuff that we haven't even seen. But I feel like. It is like the entertainment area of Tokyo. There's so much that it offers. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not like the typical stuff. It's not like anything that... I can't say one thing about Odaiba that's just like, oh, you have to. It's just the whole thing mm -hmm. is so accessible. Uh, the Sega yeah. has its own theme park mm -hmm. kind of area. And then, of course, there's the um, Gundam statue. Yeah, and there's like a Toyota There's a Yeah, there's Toyota and like, like, like drive-through center where you can see like new Toyota cars yeah. and test drive them and yeah easy to get to the metros go right there i mean it's just kind of like a little escape my number one is actually kind of like a day trip out from tokyo but it's fuji five lakes specifically really? staying at a ryokan at fuji five lakes Ooh, yeah. If you don't know what a ryokan is, it's basically like a Japanese, Japanese hotel. B &B. Yeah, a Japanese, yeah, bed and breakfast. It was just like nice to get out of the city, but also, I don't know, just like you can see like Mount Fuji from our ryokan that we stayed at. You can see it and I mean, usually get a really nice meal and yeah. it's a great service. Yeah, we took yeah. my mom there during Golden Week and it was it was just I think probably so nice. the highlight of the trip. It was really, yeah. really great. It is a bit outside of Tokyo. We took a bus there. It was a ninety minute bus. Like I don't that. think it was that long. It didn't seem it wasn't too bad. We just no, went to the to the main bus minutes. station in Shinjuku and took the bus yeah. and stayed. So it's a, like a nice little day trip if you're it spending time really in Tokyo nice. to get out. And that's where we met um Sons of Adventure. Sons of Adventure. <laughs> and now we will do our overrated. number one most overrated thing to do in Tokyo. Three, two, one. Skiji! Ah, I knew it! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Skiji. Oh, when I, thinking what, about when it. When I'm talking about Skiji, I'm talking about the tuna auctions from Skiji. Just thinking about our experience makes me so angry. <laughs> we actually had to go two times because the first time we went, they had filled up, they had taken you know, all the reservations or whatever. So we had to go back the next day and where we had been staying with our Airbnb in Tokyo, um, we had to, we had to take a metro. We were like a couple of kilometers away from from the market. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, to get tickets for the tuna auction, which is at 5 a.m., you have to get you have to sign up or get like a ticket kind of um, in advance and well in advance. We went in, hours in advance. Yeah. So we left our Airbnb at like at like 12:45 in the morning, and then. We got there like before 2 a.m. It was like 1.30. Yeah, they said, they said get here and you know pretty early to get your spot and yeah. you'll be fine. Because they only let like a, is it like 120? I think it's like two groups of 60, yeah. So we got there like at 1.30 and they had closed and we were so disappointed. And we had to walk all the way back yeah, because no nothing opened. Still. Yeah, there were no trains. Not like the actual market itself doesn't open till like nine. ten, like, like, like nine ten. or ten or yeah. something like that. So the next day, like we did stuff during the day, and then we decided that we were gonna take like the, the, the last, last train, train, which was eleven something. Yeah, yeah, it was like eleven o'clock, and then we walked a little bit 
to where the market is and we waited in line. I think line. we were like the third or fourth person in line well, if we the were second the, time. We were like <laughs> the first people. There was no line and then we went like across the street to a little park to wait. And then we saw like a couple people 12, like 12 o'clock, like midnight. Oh. There was a line that had formed. Oh, that's right. We waited like two hours. They bring you into this room and it's it's sectioned very off. Small. It's really small. There's no there's no chairs and they give you a little vest and you yeah. just have to sit there and wait until they Call take you, you in at yeah. five in the morning. So we are sitting there for like hours mm -hmm. in the small room you on the floor. Leave. Yeah, you can't like just make your reservation and go and come back, you mm -hmm. know. That'd be too convenient. <laughs> it was so boring. Oh it my god. So boring and we were so tired. Yes. So after they call your group we were actually the very first group to be called you have to walk outside it was pretty chilly outside it was not chilly the chilly gets cold really <laughs> it wasn't chilly it was like the first I week of august being cold. <laughs> i think inside that little room was cold they were blasting oh, cold air just felt cold. and then we walked out we walked across this like across from like you were at the beginning of the market you had to walk all the way to the back where they had the tune auctions and you're passing all these like heavy machinery kind of cars and people pushing different carts with fish and it's just this craziness and it's really actually kind of stinky mm. there's quite a pungent odor in the air yeah and then you get into the into the wire the actual tuna auctions are they're just kind of like big chunks of tuna and some guys walk around and they kind of point to them and they kind of touch them and they mark some little black paint on them real quick and then that was it at this point in the very beginning you're basically just seeing the the guys like the shop owners or whatever picking out what they want to bid on mm -hmm. we saw maybe we one saw maybe person. one or two auction actual yeah like a group of, of guys would walk over and then they're actually doing the auction where they're calling it out and mm -hmm. placing their bids maybe two of those and then it was like they started pushing us out they're like okay let's go mm -hmm. and they were like literally like let's move pushing you can't stop then we walked outside and they took us back to that room we gave them our vest back and that was it and then like and then okay even other people that were in our group with us were equally as unimpressed and disappointed mm -hmm. yeah. just like oh that was it even though the tuna auction ended like later in the morning the actual market still wasn't open i mean there were some like there were some, shops some open, sushi, like the sushi restaurants. restaurants we actually got sushi for breakfast which was nice <laughs> which was good but definitely if you've heard that going to this tuna auction is like a must see and you're missing out you're not don't do it so that is why Skiji is our number one most overrated thing in Tokyo. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about Tokyo. You've learned to stay away from Skiji and you'll take some of our advice with a grain of salt if you want <laughs> and check out some things that we mentioned and let us know in the comments down below if you have been to Skiji, what your experience was and what are your top five? What is your number one thing that you have to see? Maybe some of our subscribers have been to Skiji and they loved it and it was their number one thing. So let us know down below. If you liked it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we put out new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And make sure to hit that little bell icon so that you don't miss any of our next adventures. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.